Hi guys, this is the advisor and welcome back to my channel. The first thing I'm going to say today is Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are tuned into this channel today, Sunday, the 12th of May. I'd like to wish you all the best. I hope you have a very wonderful day and I just want to say thank you for actually bearing children, from bringing a human life from your womb. Big up on yourself. Big up on yourself. Now, guys, today I have two pieces of stories to bring. Well, two topics. First one is a feel-good topic that's gonna let you guys really cheer for me. Well, the decent ones are gonna cheer. The ones who love law and order and peace and who want to be safe are going to be very happy with this piece of news. But as for the crow be at them, this I go make them ball. And the second piece of news, basically, it's about logic, rational, common sense, and reason. They, that, part, that part of the video, very few people are going to stay because people are scared of learning new things. People are scared of the truth. People are scared of facts. People are scared. But for those of you who remain for that second aspect of this video, believe me, you will become more empowered because as I've always said, the, the purpose of my channel is to empower black people, empower people, and knowledge is power. So I'll be passing a piece of knowledge after the first part of the video, and if you have the stomach for truth, you will, start, you will stay for that. Anyway, guys, here is the good news for all these same people. One of the policemen who was involved in the killing of those four scumbags in the shootout on Wednesday, um, May 8th, has been promoted. Two days after him help dirt the dirty nigga them. As a matter of fact, I hear that is him actually dirt one by himself. And then the others were sh another one was shot by his colleagues and who run go around one corner and they run one corner a gap. And my man said, remember, remember you know, they are just about two minutes walk from KPH. And my man said, you're not going to KPH, you know. Mama said, we're not carrying around KPH. The only way we are carrying around there is to pronounce. But you're not going there for go up no sea line. And him dirt him up right there. So, you should when commissioner of police here. You know what the police commissioner do? The police promote him. The man get corporal by Friday. Him dirt two of them on the 8th. And by the 10th, which is Friday, the man get carpal. And if you don't think a lie, look at this. This is a page from the force orders. Now, for most of you who don't know what the force order is, let me explain. The force order is a newspaper, a newsletter that comes out for in the Jamaica Constabulary Force every Friday morning. It carries everything about what has happened in the police force the previous week. And the force order has been around since at least the 1960s. It goes to every station, every divisional headquarters, every outstation, every outpost. Because it is the duty of every single policeman to know everything that's going on in the police force. And this, the force orders, this newsletter, tells them each week. And some of the things it will tell them is like um, promotions, dismissals, resignations, transfers, new policies that are being brought on board and when they'll be enacted, and so on and so forth. And right in there was this post. Now guys, if you look at the top line, it says, To be corporals with effect from... 2024, May 10th. Oh, no, no, need nothing more than that. And as you can see, 
I have omitted his name in the, the blue section. I have omitted his name and his regulation number, but you can see the station he is at. He's from Kingston Central. Good police forget protection. Can we want police like this? These are the ones who are going to protect us. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. His colleagues consider him to be an, a hero. As a matter of fact, two more policemen a year has been also, have also been recommended for promotions. So we can look for those over the course of the next week or two. And I will definitely be carrying those in this channel. Those news in this channel. The thing you know guys is I need to say this. Um, the, my channel has reached the eyes and ears of the Commissioner of Police. I know that for a fact. A sergeant in the JCF actually sent it to the Commissioner's phone. I won't say where that sergeant is actually stationed. I am hearing that the Commissioner have a CUG phone. That is a closed user group phone where they make contact with all the high senior ranking men have one. And I hear that it was sent to that phone, not his private phone, but a JCF phone and a closed user group. So I am assuming that it was opened. I don't know, but I know it had been sent to the commissioner. And if so, then it has had some influence because this has never happened before in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, where as a police dirt too dirty drunk or so, bam, then gets chipe. I had suggested that. And I want that to the way we get back to policing. You kill dirty nigger, you get striped. I agree with that. The way things are going in Jamaica now, today, you have to use fire and fight fire. You can't go on like sweet boy. And what is really, had really ticked me off more than ever? The thing is, the same day, that same day, Wednesday the 8th, when... The police in um, Central Kingston was doing that very great piece of work. And that same day, Westman and the Grangeil police went to Top Lincoln and got in at the house of a boy named Paul Turner. And them going at Paul Turner house, knocked on him door. When him opened it, them got in at Paul Turner house and him alone was there. When them search on a Paul Turner pillar, what them find? Gun. And I'm pillar. What did the Westmoreland police do? Them carry him on the gun go station. No. <laughs> no, I like seriously. Let me tell you something, man. It look like the Westmoreland police never got the memo. They never got the memo which say, to make short work of gunmen. That, that, because that the boy they soon come back a road. By tomorrow morning, Monday morning, him they back a road. So why you better carry me in for? Why you better carry me in for? Listen, Westmoreland police, listen to me now. You see, when you find a man with a gun and you don't want to dirt him, Give him back him gun and make him go on about him business. L give him back him gun and make him go on. Sooner or later, decent, real police will see him and will do the job where you want to do. But just give, as a matter of fact, if you want to keep the gun, even keep the gun. But not carry me. Let him go because him have him linked to get back another gun by the following day. So you can't even keep the gun. But set him free. Make him work. Make him go so that real police can find him. You understand? Now, to the commissioner of police, I have another little piece of advice to you because it look like you're a shape up still, you know. Look like you're a shape up. I, I, and, and I'm going to give you some credit. Yeah? Thank you for promoting that, man. And I look forward to the promotion of the other two policemen who, wh whose bullets were found inside of them goons. Now, I have another little suggestion to you, Mr. Commissioner. You see, the Westmoreland police, them love to arrest. So, put them at a place where they can do as much arrest as possible. 
transfer them up to the commissioner's office. And since them love to arrest, throw whole heap of DNG back all over the place. Just fling DNG back all over. And since them love to arrest, and them love arrest, make them turn back the police. Make them arrest all the back of them with a pan the compound. And then you send them over guardsman next door and send them over Campion, which just a little further up the road. Uh, and make them go to the back gate and go up on Hopefield Avenue, go find more battle and arrest them. And give the real police who can do real police work the job to go on the road and do what they have to do. Sorry guys, for you foreigners who don't understand battle police, I really can't explain it now, but every Jamaican would understand and they might kill themselves with laugh. But one at a time, me explain. Ask a Jamaican what is a battle police, yeah? Now guys, fun and joke aside, we are going to get in a really serious matter though. This is a big people thing. You see guys, my main purpose on this channel, you know, is to free people. To free people by empowering them. And the way you empower people, you know, is by freeing them. Freedom is power. You get freedom through knowledge because knowledge itself is power. I know that a lot of my people are blind because they refuse to think. They flatly refuse to think. And the only way to wake them up is to let them realize that there is a whole new world of knowledge out there for them to tap into and through which they can be empowered. The most essential aspect of empowerment is through the ability to think, to think. The people who control you, the people who enslave you, they have all the power and they keep you from thinking because if you start to think, you will wake up. There are only three types of power in the world. Religion, politics, and the banks. And by extension, money. I heard that money is power. But we must know knowledge is bigger power than money. You go to your pastor and question him. And you see if your pastor now read you out of church. Or run you. Or not have no time for you. You sit on a back bench if you ever question your pastor too much. If you question the Bible, they run you. They, they fear you. They scared of you. Because you cannot control a person who thinks or who asks questions. Or who have an inquisitive mind and who wants to know the truth. Politicians are the same thing. No politician is going to entertain you if I ever question their actions. They don't want you upon them. They want to send you, them say, oh, you don't belong over here, so can you question me? You belong over the other side. They run you. They're scared of you. Nobody will entertain anybody unless they can control them. Any of these three, whether politicians, are pastors. So religion and politics is the two ultimate forms of mind control. Because when it comes to politics and religion, nobody wants to think. Nobody wants to think or question them politician or question them pastor. And this traps their mind. And because their minds are so trapped, they lose the ability to think. Therefore, they'll never wake up. Some people, you cannot tell say them politician a thief. As far as them concern, only the politician from the other side a thief. All when the country are broke down and everything is going wrong around them, they are in this delusion that this politician is the best. The pastor, the same thing. No matter how them pastor a grind off the little young members in the church and I grind them off the same one and I rob them and I exploit them and I use them, they will can't see. They can't see because their minds are trapped. It's oh, it's the pastor of the other church down there, so are the other denomination down there, so which are the evil. My denomination are the good one. Oh, my pastor, no, every pastor we can accept my pastor. My pastor, a good pastor. No, this is not to say that there are not good pastors and good politicians, you know. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they are few and far between. And the only way to find out. The truth about these people is to think, to think, to think. Which me, leads me specifically to the point I'm trying to get at. 
this I, I'm going into no, an intellectual conversation now. Anyway, following on the post that I'd put out recently about dirting these gunmen and then just send them up to God to sort out the weed from the tears, somebody said to me in a post that, as a matter of fact, what about three or four persons, responded by saying, I should not have included God in my comment. But the p fact is, I was not the one who bring God into it. It was the person who made the suggestion that God would have changed these people. Therefore, it is unfair to say that I brought God into it. Secondly, they are saying that God couldn't do anything to stop it because he, God doesn't want to interfere with free will. And God was so good that he gave man free will. And because of the love he has for, for us, that's why he gave us this free will and we can do as we want with it. Now, that free will comment is one that is a subterfuge that Christians always use. Now, I want, let us examine that free will explanation. Human beings cannot have free will if God is omniscient. If God knows everything that we are going to do, it is impossible for humans to have free will. Now, let me break that down. God already has a video. God has seen the video of me from the day I was born until the day I die. He has seen every single thing that I have done, every thought that I've ever thought, everything. He see how many times I've changed my mind and how many times I've regrets or whatever. And he already knows everything, like a book. Him see the video, him have the video, him already know. How can I do anything outside of what God had already seen on the video? Remember, use the question of a video, so to speak. If I, if I were to do anything whatsoever that God never see, then him is not God. As if him was God, he would already know every single thing that I'm going to do. In other words, I cannot change a single action. No human being can change a single action that they do because God don't have your video and him don't see everything where you do from the day you're born till you're dead. So it's a done deal. So it is impossible for us to have free will. The only way we can have free will is if God didn't know what we were going to do. Then of course we would have free will. But God wouldn't be God. Because how can you have a God who no not know what we are going to do? Who can't see the future? Is that a God? And since we are already convinced that God knows everything, he's omniscient, then we don't have free will. In other words, free will and omniscience are logically incompatible. So, Christians, make up your mind. Is it that we actually have free will and God don't know what we are going to do? Or is it that God know everything we're going to do and we don't have free will? One or the other. So, basically, I have now killed the free will argument. And if you don't think I've killed it, I challenge anybody anybody across the entire planet to come and tell me what is wrong with what I just said. I challenge it and I will record that and I'll put it on my channel and if they have a good good um, enough argument that can prove me wrong, I will update it and let everybody know. That's an open challenge to any human being anywhere across this planet. Tell me how we have free will while God knows everything we are going to do at the same time. That's not possible. I just want my people to think, think, because only by thinking will you ever wake up. Guys, like, share, leave a comment below, and I look forward to see you in my next video.